Hey man, I don't know your name. I don't know your name, but um, it's not stupid. It's not stupid what you're feeling at all. I've been, I've been through that. There's this girl. I went through it my whole life. I went through it since I was in sixth grade is when I really started to, really. Seventh grade, Megan Dunn, man, Megan, and Michelle DeFago. Megan sat behind me and Michelle sat in front of me in homeroom. And they used to talk to me and stuff, but I just, I didn't know. I was so afraid. And like my friends told, rather than just me just walking up to her and saying, I'm really attracted to you, which I could have done, but I didn't realize it. I don't know. No one ever told me I could do it. No one ever told me I could, I could approach someone and just tell them what I think. Because when you do that, that's when people really respond to it. That's when people want to be around you. And when people want to be around that kind of behavior. So I didn't know. So now I'm telling you, so you know. Because we have the power. It's just about doing it. And people will react any way that they want, but just tell them. I mean, don't let, don't let it upset you however they respond. Don't let it make you feel good however they respond. I mean, just listen to them and ask them why they're responding like that. Especially if they laugh. I think they laugh because it's a situation that makes them so nervous. You know, people laugh, people freak out, they walk away, they don't know what to say because it's like she, what she's going through, dude, is just what you're, if you're going through the same thing as her, like she's feeling it hard right now. She's probably freaking out, thinking about talking, telling you and like they're not talking about it, it's just making it weirder and, and harder to confront. So there's this girl, Sarah Brown, man, Sarah, I still, she's still a great friend, like I just have I haven't talked to her in so long, but. I think of her as a great friend. <laughs> she, uh, I was actually in love with her my freshman year of high school. I'm sorry, my junior and senior year of high school. Kind of in my junior year, yeah, but then really in my senior year. And then after that, and then into college, and I still was like hung up on her. I, I was at college. She wasn't at my college, but I still hung up on her. So I finally, one night, at the summer after my freshman year of college, I mean, I was just incapable of having another relationship because I was so hung up on her. Like it was, she consumed my thoughts because I wasn't saying what I felt because I was afraid. And no one ever said to me, you can do this until Bob said it, Bob, Bob Gregg, Bob, my roommate from freshman and sophomore year. I've known Bob since we were like four. And then he moved to Green. He moved away in like third grade, but we still hung out about once a year. And then over the summer, his dad would come back and they'd play softball in Cuyahoga Falls, so he'd come back every, sometimes on Fridays. And man, those were some good times, Bob. Bob can, said to me, listen, you gotta tell her. I'm coming over, I'm driving over, and I'm gonna pick you up and take you over there. And you can tell her, and I said, okay. All right, so he did. He came over, and then he. I got in the car, and I was like, whew, we were like breathing. I was breathing hard. I he he was nervous. Like he was like excited. He was excited, and I was freaking out. And I went over, and it was like midnight, and I knew she and I had hung out that night, and I was all broken up. And I called Bob, and I was like, man, I just I feel. And he was like, that was what made him say, I'm coming over. So she was still up, up in her window, and I was start throwing rocks up at her window, for real. This is a real story. This is really, I did this. Um, throwing rocks up at her window and finally she like looked down. I was like, hey, come down. Hey, it's Ian. And Bob was like in the car parked this, across the street, like gave me my privacy, let me do it. And uh, she came down and I told her, I said, listen, I'm, uh, I'm in love with you. I've been in love with you for a long time. And she said, I don't know if I worded it that eloquently. I'm sure I didn't. I was like all nervous. I didn't. I, I, I looked down. And I was like, it's just the, it's how I feel. You know, I didn't know what it was. I was the first time I've really I've ever confronted anything like that. And uh, she said what I thought she was going to say, which was I'm just, I don't feel the same way. I mean, I knew it. I knew it was coming and it hurt. And I said, I know. I know. And so, okay. And it was kind of awkward. I said, all right, well, thanks. 
and I left. And then we, uh, our friendship was never the same. We didn't hang out as much due to my fear, but I, I got over. And I started dating Amanda shortly after that. Maybe about five months after that. Amanda and I became really good friends right after that. Like really good friends. Hmm. I used to tell her about Sarah all the time. She would tell me about Jeff, the guy she was dating. We were friends for like, me and Amanda were friends for like 10 months or a year or something before we started dating. I really like her a lot. She's really fucking cool. All right, man. Let me know your name. Or put it on your profile or something. It was good to get your video and know you're not alone and know it's not stupid. I feel what you feel. I've, I've experienced, literally experienced it, but I mean I've experienced it. We've all experienced it. See ya.